I'm going to turn it over to a returning um, uh, curator here, uh, Elisa. Welcome back, and uh, please. Yeah, thanks, Storm. Um, so, um, hello, everybody. This is our third Live TMA um, panel. Uh, my name is Elisa. I work for Live DMA. For those of you who don't know us, we are a European network for live music associations, representing over 3,000 venues, clubs, and festivals in Europe. And um, so previous to this session, um, we already looked at advocacy approaches um, from live music organization in organizations in Europe, and we also had a chat with our survey coordinator on, on the data who gave us um, insight on how really... Um, um, COVID affects um, the venues in numbers. And um, so what, um, what I really want to do with this session um, that we called COVID-19 and then what is maybe to, to look a bit in the future and um, in, a, in a more positive way, hopefully. And so um, I invited Stephanie Thoma from Fidelima in France and um, Federico Rassetti from Tivo on Live in Italy. Um, to talk together during the next 30 minutes to glance in the future and speculate on what will happen um, for the venues or maybe even better to reflect on what we can do now to create a sustainable and diverse future for the music ecosystem. Because as we've already said so many times before is that the whole livelihood of the entire music ecosystem is at stake right now and this risk will persist um, even after the public health emergency is solved. So. Um, my first question to you, um, Stephanie and Federico, um, is that, so how are you working um, with your venues um, right now to prepare this, the transition period for the future and, and or what are you already doing with the venue spaces right now? Federico, would you like to start? Okay, yes, I, I will start. Uh, hello to everyone, I'm Federico Razzetti. I'm in charge of the direction of Keep On Life, which is the national association of Italian live venues. Well, um, you know, one of the particularity of this situation is the confusion, uh, fake news, anxiety, uh, difficult interpretation of the decree law. Uh, so we think and what we are doing, um, we think that the first thing to do as a national, a national association is um, in this transition between the before and the after uh, is raising uh, the pennant, the flag. Like, uh, you know, um, in a battle, even though we, we dislike the war metaphor, which is often used, uh, well, in a battle, you know, where the troops are fighting in the cows, but they are still following their flags, as long as this flag remains hanging clear. What I mean is that the um, first approach to have is to stay closer to the venues, talk to them, and spread their needs as much as possible, both to the public audience and to the venues. So it's very important to expose themselves as national association uh, with sobriety and but firmness. And we listen to the base they are needing and uh, take some time, but at the same time, try to give them uh, a global vision because sometimes the, the venue is very focused on their territory, their city, but they have to look at the uh, widescreen. Hi everyone, pleased to, to see you uh, today and thank you Federico for sharing what you're doing. I'm working for a um, French uh, venues national association with, which is gathering about 150 venues in France and uh, as Federico says we do much more the same than uh, gathering information, try to decrypt uh, uh, juridic and laws and so on to, to give some feedback to our, our members but we maybe at the contrary of you we are uh, trying to also have a work on uh, what um, are we trying to do, to do after the, the, the COVID crisis and one of the, the leads that we follow is to work on a local uh, very local uh, environment so we have also the change that um, uh, the economical models of uh, our venues are quite different, I think, than yours in Italy. Uh, in France, we have the chance to work in partnerships with the local authorities and with uh, the Ministry of Culture, and we have got a lot of subsidies. And the subsidies are not cut for the moment. So, uh, for the moment, our venues are quite uh, like 
uh, uh, good in the crisis. So they, they try to raise solidarity uh, uh, around them, around the, the, the actors of the, their territories, and with the, the, the comfort that they have, they try to give, uh, for example, uh, to, to pay the artists for the session that they, don't, they can't do, to pay the promoters for the session, the local promoters for the session that they can't uh, 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 afford also. And uh, we try also to imagine a lot of uh, solidarity uh, mechanisms to, to try not to make the whole sector shut down with the crisis. And can you share some of these ideas of, of solidarity mechanisms? Yeah, but for example, it's uh, the, the basic, it's uh, to pay for the sessions. For, for example, uh, uh, all venues have a lot of uh, uh, jigs and concerts that uh, may have taken place in uh, uh, April, May, uh, to June. So we ask the venues uh, who can to pay actually the artists uh, for those concerts that they can do. Uh, in order to allow the artists to continue to live. We have the special systems also in France for the artists, we, which we call intermittence de spectacle, I don't know how to say in English, uh, but it's a system that uh, allows the artists to have some, uh, to, 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 um, to make, to, uh, can you help me, Elisa, with uh, this? Uh, this um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's this a system. special status for artists that um, allows them to, to get um, state aids during the time that they are um, unemployed. And yeah. so their revenue is basically generated from, um, from the unemployment fund and also from the, from the gigs um, they're making. That's it, thank you. So for the artists, do not lose their statutes in the special uh, intermittent statute. We, we try to, to give them some, some, some money and uh, to continue to pay even if they don't play, for example. We also uh, we have some venues who going who is uh, actually preparing the uh, se September uh, uh, in in uh, in a way that uh, they try to to um, uh, to talk with all the local actors promoters uh, la labels artists but also all the the other uh, sectors that they work with for example. That, that's also a particular, particularity of the, the venues in France, but we are not doing only concerts. We also do a lot of uh, edu educational activities with, uh, for example, the Ministry of uh, ed uh, National Education. Uh, we also do a real soul. We also do restaurants and bars. I think like uh, everyone uh, uh, here. We also do, well, we have a lot of, uh, a big panel of activities. So the idea is to, 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 to begin the, the new uh, period with only some activities of the venues, uh, excluding the concerts for the moment, and uh, try to, to involve the whole sector, the whole partners that uh, the venues have in those activities. So cooperation um, with all the different partners, be it, be it like just um, like local food and, and, and beverage shops until um, yeah, more also. institutional partners is very key. Maybe to also keep this cooperation up during um, the current crisis and then also to, to continue it afterwards. Federico, how are you um, preparing? Um, so a transition uh, period to... Yeah, yeah some, some, same for a lot of Italian um, venues. The, um, the, um, the food delivery is one of the interim solution that they are using uh, most. And uh, even the food and beverage delivery. So for example, they, um, they sell food <laughs> and beverage to the people and they send a code with, uh, with, and with the code you can uh, see live streaming or um, uh, not only streaming, but even um, uh, I, I, I don't remember the, the word, on-demand video and on-demand video on the platform of the venues. So you take food, you take beverage, and with the code, you can enter in the dedicated room in the uh, site, website, or social media of the venues, and you can, uh, and you can uh, see the, the concert. In this way, it's like you pay the concert. So the venue can pay the, the artist. And... Uh, 
is not we we begin to um, to spread live streaming videos for free but now a lot of venues are moving to uh, some kind of payment uh, system and which is good because they can pay the technician to set up the the video and the technician to set up the streaming and uh, all and, and the artist as well but um, talking about uh, interim solution um, we think that it's not only important to focus on economic side but also taking the opportunity to raise the voice and the recogni recognition to the institution um, for example we um, talking about this uh, we organize an activity which involve more than 60 venues in all the country and uh, with um, an unique coordinated lineup, lineup program via live streaming from each one venues social channel this campaign has collected over 2 million of visualization in all the country and we hope that this this will strengthen our dialogue with central central institution and uh, ask for safeguards for independent venues in the mid terms um, the vinyl could mix, uh, we think the vinyl could mix a low attendance event because we hope that we won't open in March 2021, but we can open early, uh, especially the medium and smaller um, venue. And um, so we think that in the midterm, so, they sorry, could mix. Sorry, Federico. Sorry, yes? uh, it, it's, uh, you have just said that uh, venues are going to reopen on March 2021, or uh, I misunderstood? Yeah. No, 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 you, you don't uh, misunderstood. Um, this news that spread all over Europe and a lot of our colleagues asked me, what <laughs> live venues will open on March 20, um, 2021? The, the answer is no, but the bigger event probably will open on this date. What we are saying is, okay, we can open on March 2021. We must open before, okay? With obviously all the right uh, um, safety and um, sanitizing uh, uh, protocols, because obviously it's very, it's the, the priority is the safety for the public and for the workers, but it's not possible to open on March. In, and we think this is possible, open in September and October, uh, talking about medium and smaller events and venues. And so we think that uh, it's possible in this first month of reopening that the venue can mix live streamings on demand with low attendance um, events. And um, well, yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay. And, and do you expect, um, so you already said that there might be sanitized new challenges, new safety measures for venues um, so that they can open. Um, are there big and maybe also long-term changes you expect for the venue's activities? Yeah, um, I hope this will not change completely the, the gathering mod modeling model of the, of the events, but I think that uh, in the long term, uh, for example, um, it's Italy is one of the European country with the lowest attitude to uh, buy online or um, using uh, internet and, uh, and mobile, uh, mobile apps and for the business as well. So I think this could be the opportunity to, to uh, go on, on and, and to go on in these aspects. And I think they will uh, impact a lot on uh, event organization. Have you any thoughts about this, Steve? Yeah, maybe. Uh, we just uh, had this uh, meeting this morning with, uh, with the venues, with the Fedelimas venues, and uh, a lot of them saying that uh, the distanciation is not the way to imagine the future. We can't imagine the future with uh, people wearing masks and and having a distance of uh, one or two meters between them because our work is live, it's a social link. So we must project ourselves in, a, in, a, in an after COVID uh, 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 thing and, and try to reimagine maybe uh, the, the live or main activity, the concerts in another way in order that uh, it, can, it can 
uh, suits also the sanitary recommendation and so on. So, for example, we work with the Ministry of Culture and with the Ministry of the Health in France to try to imagine what can be in a, in a, in a short time the measures that we have to take, uh, for example, with a, that let's imagine that we host uh, 50 people in a, in a venue, not, not, for, uh, not um, for a concert, but for example, for a rehearsal or educational activity. What can be this measure? What is uh, um, sorry, realistic to do? And after that, uh, if we have to continue to have some sanitary measure, how can we imagine that the, uh, we can, uh, we can bring again a, um, a link between the people in the venues, in the walls of the venues. Uh, so with the Ministry of Culture, we imagine a lot of things uh, that, uh, that goes to uh, give some funds to the venues in order that they buy some, uh, some uh, uh, you know, materials and so on to, to, to help to, to, to reopen. But it's also a, a, a work with the artists, for example, to imagine some new kind of concerts or some new kind of uh, uh, live uh, shows that, uh, that are like more comfortable uh, for everyone. In, because we also imagine that the people are going to be afraid to go to the events, to go to the concerts in a, in a much, maybe a long, a long period. So we also have to reassure the people and to show that we can, to can, to show sorry that uh, we can stay open without uh, making anyone in danger. So, well, it's not that concrete what I'm saying, but uh, uh, we are starting to imagine that. I think like a lot of people. <laughs> There's a question I think in the chat. Um, yeah. So just um, to say that in, in Fidelima there's um, like already a creative task force um, thinking on, on what you can do. And, and, and so that's also great just again to say that um, to have such a network where the venues can exchange and, and find mm -hmm. a common space to be creative together and find solutions together. Well, I've decided this morning also to create like a, like you say, a task force, but also with people um, not in the venues. We ask from, a re we ask researchers, we ask uh, uh, universitaries, we ask uh, some like personalities to help us to 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 share a plan for the future for example mm -hmm. we have this reflection on economics uh, saying that maybe we can also try to uh, profit uh, to take benefit of uh, this time to reimagine a new economy not not uh, not that um, hardcore that it was previously maybe a more sustainable economy a more solidary economy so, well, that's also some leads that we follow. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, maybe just before moving um, to the question, um, I would like to ask um, you, Federico, if you see also maybe in this um, some chances and, and also chances for the venues as, as local music support ecosystems, maybe. Yeah, the, the most of our uh, venues think that could be an opportunity to come back to the roots. <laughs> so um, even because in Italy, there's a particularity in the last uh, five years uh, when the artist fees has, have increased exponentially and in two days doesn't exist a band under 2000 euro, which can guarantee the right attendance for the show economic sustainability. And almost doesn't exist an artist between 2000 euro and 5000 euro uh, at all, because it's Italian artists. So a lot of venues think this can be an opportunity for the market to come back to more sustainability level, program local artists, uh, and uh, talking. Uh, we, we're talking a lot with the management and the booking agency to find a new, uh, more um, cooperative and sustainability model for the internal market. So uh, without no more selling uh, uh, band, but co-production and uh, with uh, low technical, less technical uh, request. And so um, we think this 
can be a good opportunity to come back with a model that are even better than the last four years in Italy for the mid and the small business. Uh, of sure, uh, for sure, it, there is a, um, a doubt that the, the thread for the um, big multinational uh, of this sector that they will buy and uh, acqui um, uh, acquisition campaign to, to acquis uh, acquisition for, uh, for agency and uh, smaller venue. This is the threat. I think this is also a threat for the festivals. Uh, I mean, uh, we're also working with uh, some festivals in France and uh, the, the main concern is that is uh, saying that uh, if we're not doing this, um, this uh, July uh, uh, event that we used to do, then we have to postpone it in 2021 and uh, we have our economies uh, uh, falling down. So maybe uh, Live Nation or another big name of uh, the international companies are going to try to, to get uh, the project on us. And, and what are your thoughts on, um, on what could we do um, to to really to keep this um, diversity in Europe and of the European live music scene um, alive and and what can we do like you said that those um, the most fragile actors are not forced to abandon or are not swallowed up by some bigger players um, what 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 are your um, what's your message to basically um, support this diversity well we we think that obviously we have to talk a lot um, on an internal uh, market so with agency and, um, and management, but it's uh, very, very important that an impartial, um, impartial uh, direction of this dialogue will take place. And this impartial uh, dialogue, uh, we um, have to, 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 to be led by, by the government, by the central and the local uh, government, because they are impartial and they have all the um, all the interest in uh, maintain the diversity and the, um, of the of the of the local music scene. For example, in, in Italy, it's very difficult for the big event go on the south because there are not um, uh, proper venues, uh, but the medium and small venues are more uh, distributed in on all the country so it's very important for the for the for the government for the for the country maintain the small and the medium uh, venue because they are more accessible they are spread and, and they are more democratic i, I want to say uh, and i will have i think uh, quite the same message is to say that uh, Maybe we can just uh, demonstrate that our venues are not just concert providers. We also have a, a very useful uh, 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 role in our territories, uh, um, a role of uh, social link, a role of gathering people together. And uh, the concert is not like, I mean, yeah, it's a core of our works, but it's not this, the only thing. Our venues are useful because they're gathering people together. And I think after this COVID crisis, what the people need will need is mainly that social this is the key point. social gathering yeah okay thank you um i'm just uh looking at the chat right now um where peter rogers um asks so an alliance in the uk that is collaborating with the who safe listening project is working on a way to feedback the live audience sound and light back to the venue and artists um, would you find this useful? If so, could you spread the word to join the Alliance, which is free? And we are planning to share a tag. Um, I have not been familiar with this project. Have you been, Federico and Steve? No. no, 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 I'll just discover it now. Yeah, and um, so maybe um, I would, what I would like to add is that I'm not, I'm not, I'm not familiar with this um, project, but um, at Lifetime A, we are doing the Open Club Day. Um, which is, um, we coordinate this on a European level, which is basically um, once a year, the venues open their doors during daytime and invite the audience into discover what's happening and um, really to demystify um, some negative stereotypes that might be attached to a venue's activities um, that are often attached like 
um, to nightlife and so on. And, and it's basically really to allow the audience to get familiar with the venue. And um, I was just thinking um, maybe there could be a chance in, in, in such an activity, such a project, the Open Club Day also to reconnect the audience um, with the venue after the COVID-19. What, what are your thoughts on this, Steve? Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, you're okay. That's my <laughs> I'm totally okay with that. I mean, <laughs> I think we're off time. <laughs> yeah. We got a pressure off. Yeah, uh, we are. <laughs> we are. We almost ready to wrap up. But okay. That's that's that is a that's a big one. Um, you, you all, uh, you all, uh, Steph, Stephanie and Federico, you touched on it. I mean, it's all about us getting back together again and feeling that unity again mm. and. Um, and you know the title of this 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 topic and this session is so important, and it's part of the reason we have this this gathering. It's what's next, and and you know I, I it was refreshing to hear your your perspectives on it. Uh, before we conclude, uh, I would ask that if you all wouldn't mind putting your contact information into the chat for those people. It sounds like especially Peter, who might want to get in touch with you later. Uh, after this, and I want to remind everybody too that we'll have the Slack channel over. Uh, uh, I posted the link, but I think it will be uh, room number 29. Um, and um, I would encourage uh, you uh, panelists to to please go over there after this. But are there any concluding remarks uh, before we wrap up? I'm good. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Well, well, thank you, and um, uh, let's give a big hand however we can, uh, yeah, <laughs> as hands or whatever, um, and uh, we appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule, and Elisa, you've practically given us your whole day, and thank I don't even think it's done much. yet, <laughs> so, <laughs> so on that note, uh, we at, at, we're going to conclude here, and we don't come back, we're going to take a break for an hour, so that would be... Uh, I guess uh, what six a.m. Pacific. Depends time? on the Maybe time I'm zone right. that you're in. Six a.m. Pacific mm. time. That's the the base we've been using. And uh, <laughs> we'll um, come back to this room for what for we have two. Okay, this was already insane enough to be doing a conference that stretched out across with some beautiful gaps. Thank goodness, uh, uh, twenty five hours. But we start two rooms. Um, at, at the next hour. So we will have one room uh, that Cassie will be hosting that are um, uh, two sessions with about five countries across Latin America. And wow. then um, I will be uh, picking up the panel about, uh, actually hosted by, I believe, the Sound Diplomacy crew, mm -hmm. uh, what this crisis taught us about the current music industry infrastructure and how to plan for the future. So a continuing thread from this part of the conversation, but we're going to mm -hmm. take an hour break and return in both rooms. I'm going to leave this room open so that it's easy to find for folks who are in here and you can just walk off and do something else and come back. Uh, but otherwise... Um, this is, I'm the one who made up these names. This is Alpha 6. You'll be returning to Alpha 6 for that conversation. And Beta 1, if you can go back into the listing from Eventbrite, if you came in here to join the Latin American conversation. I'll have more coffee. These little guys will be mm -hmm. off doing something else. Uh, and I'm but, going to bed. Good night. And Storm's going <laughs> to bed. <laughs> thanks Good again, night. you all. Bye. Thanks stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks a lot. Ciao. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.